do you allow yourself to play? Just make marks and put down paint and different media and have some fun exploring. A lot of people are apprehensive about it. Recently, I did a play date workshop with my community and I would love to share it with you today. My name is Pat Scrivener and I'm a visual artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I paint in my studio nearly every day. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that little bell for notification. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And I always love questions, so please feel free to comment. Thanks for watching. Uh, welcome ladies, uh, thanks for joining and uh, it's really nice to have so many of you uh, come out to play. So uh, I don't know really what inspired me to do this. Um, I just think it's an important thing and I often play by myself and I hear from other students that they struggle maybe to get started, to um, know what to do on a canvas, uh, don't know what to paint, want to find their authentic style. Uh, so many things um, that might be stopping you or blocking you or you have imposter syndrome or fear that you're gonna make a mistake or as adults you're really um, um, results oriented and you think maybe playing is a waste of time or it's a waste of materials. There's so many reasons and uh, they're all valid, but playing is very valuable and I encourage you to do it, not just today, but um, any day in your own studio. So the thing with playing is that um, it, it helps you to loosen up. So I kind of, Oh, just, I'm seeing somebody here. I'll just let them in. So I um, look at playing um, similar to practicing a musical instrument um, that is a warm up exercise. And you can paint better if you've given yourself a chance to kind of warm up and just get out of your headspace and stuff. Play is also good if you have a painting that is um, kind of eh, static and it's not moving, not getting anywhere. Sometimes that's when to make a really bold move or play on it and kind of create some new chaos that you have to respond to. So I use play a lot in that um, event. So just when things are getting a little bit precious, just to kind of let her rip and, and mess it up. And I know that can be sound really fearful, but I promise you on the other side, there's a better painting. So I encourage that as well. Um, the other um, thing about playing is new discoveries. So, you know, we call them happy accidents, but wouldn't it be nice if we could discover them and actually make those accidents a part of our practice. So that's, that can be something that comes out of play as well. And so just an exploration of materials is another thing. Maybe you have a bunch of materials that kind of sit around in the back of your drawer cupboard. I know I do, uh, it becomes a 20-80 rule that we use 20% uh, 20 of our supplies 80% of the time. And uh, it's important to um, just kind of change it up and change our tools up so things don't get so the same all the time. And I think um, that's another good reason to play. The other thing you might want to do uh, is just explore, like maybe you have a bunch of colors that never get used. Um, you bought them thinking they were nice, but they just don't fit or whatever. So maybe it's a time to pull out some of those colors and try to um, revamp them by mixing them into something that would work or that you would use. So uh, I encourage you to try that too. So today what we're going to do is just really um, not worry about any results at all. It doesn't matter if you make the biggest mess 
of all times. And um, hopefully that by doing so, you will have learned something. And it might be just how to release some of your anxiety around doing uh, the playfulness exercise. So whatever you get out of it, but if you get some beautiful marks or you learn some new way of making a mark with a tool that you have or haven't tried or a new color, whatever, it's all good. So I encourage you not to um, analyze too much when you're doing this. So we wanna kind of get into our childlike state thinking that we're four or five when we didn't have a care in the world and we just love to put the color down, scribble with the crayons and um, just let it go. So, oh, it's got somebody else to come in. So um, I'm gonna do, be doing a demonstration first of um, just some playfulness with things that I've pulled out today. And um, I have no clue what I'm gonna do really. I just grabbed some stuff that um, I'm kind of curious about. So my big question is always what if? What if I tried this and what would happen if I added that? And how could I use this in my art or how could I use this tool differently in my art? Uh, so always uh, asking those questions. And I think this is really how we find our authentic style and our voice. It starts to become very clear because these are our marks that we're making. Nobody else can duplicate our marks. They're special and unique to us, just like our DNA. So that's why it's so important to play and find out what, what marks you like making. Also trying your non-dominant hand is also another really good way to um, play as well because we can get some interesting marks and shapes and more looseness. So yeah, so um, I think that was everything that I was gonna talk about. Uh, so the next thing I'd like to do is um, just a uh, chakra toning uh, exercise. I usually do this in my live workshops and just to kind of release any anxieties you have and get into a calm place where you can just come to the uh, creative um, table with a, an awareness of being in the, in the right state of mind. So I do this often before I start painting and I find it really helpful. So if you've never have had your uh, chakras tone before, um, it might be a new experience for you. And it's not as good over the, the waves of the internet as it is in real person getting that uh, real vibration. But um, I'm sure you'll get something out of it. So I have the chakra chimes behind me here. And I'm going to be gonging on them. And you can sit comfortably or you can stand with your feet about a foot apart and just let it resonate and go through you and you'll at the end feel quite relaxed and grounded I think so um, if you want just whether you're going to sit or stand just kind of you know shake yourself out a bit and um, I'm going to move my card rack okay so ready
The next thing I'm going to do is pick a mandala card for all of us as a group and um, just see how that goes. So our card today is celebrate, sorry, celebrate, celebrate the every day. So I think that's a really good, uh, good message for us to live by. So ladies, I am going to um, put my gloves on, I think, because I could get messy. And I'm going to switch my camera over to my table views. I am trying, <laughs> I've been using um, disposable gloves for a long time and I get tired of buying them. So I'm trying these gardening gloves I found that are really um, super comfortable and they fit me good. And I'm hoping that I can keep them going for a lot longer uh, than my disposable gloves. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, um, Let's see. I'm curious about a couple of things. And uh, one is um, how Chinese ink and um, just India ink, how they respond, if, they're, if there's any difference really between them, because I have some of both. Oops, and I've already made a mess. So I've got a little Chinese ink in here and I'm just going to use a twig, I think. I made splatters on here just by, without trying. Okay, so this is my Indian ink. Now I might not notice any difference until I actually add something to it. So, but I am finding, this is a Chinese ink, I'm finding it feels more fluid, like it goes further and stuff. So it does feel different in its marks maybe. So I'm going to let that just set up. But in the meantime, I want to try some other ways of application. So I have no clue how this will work, but I've got some dried bits of stuff. So this is just from some kind of grass in my garden. Oh, that made a nice mark, huh? Yeah, so, so just trying some different things. I had a little bit of pine here too, I thought might be interesting. Not so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, I had some other tools here, other things that I wanted to try. So I have this bottle brush thing. Ooh, ooh, kind of splatters too, scratches. That might be interesting to use for something. I have it in a couple of sizes too, so. Okay, the other thing I have, and I haven't used these much, is this Liquitex Creative Brush. And I don't know, it just kind of sits in my drawer, so I'm gonna try it with some ink. Oh yeah, it's a good splatter brush. So for sure I like it for splatters. I'm not sure I like it for line. Not really. That's not too bad. So that works really well um, with more fluid mediums. It's not going to work with um, heavy body paint. So the thing that you could use is just acrylic um, paint that um, you've added a little bit of medium to, to, to make it a little more liquid or buy the high flow paint. 
And usually I like using high flow paint better than I do inks and stuff, because what I found with inks is that often they are um, not stable and, and they'll keep bleeding in your work. So that's why I prefer to use acrylic, the acrylic paint even over acrylic ink. So I'm going to put some gesso on this, I think. and see what happens. So you could use a brayer and this is still wet. So obviously I'm gonna make some gray, but I'm also making some pattern with that. That's kind of nice too, that I'm getting a mottled kind of an effect going on there. So a lot of playing is uh, discovery and there, um, look what happened, flattening that out. So the ink bled a little bit as well. Okay, I'm gonna flatten this out and see what happens. Yeah, so totally change the mark. So that can be fun. And um, now I might start playing with crayons or something. This is a just an oil pastel. So, And an oil pastel with acrylic work is going to probably act like a resist. Although these are really cheap pastels, um, so they don't have that much oil in them. I find they were quite good. They're actually from my childhood. I've had them forever. So let's see. No, I love using a Woody Stabilo as well. This one's black, so more black lines. And it's not water soluble. I mean, sorry, it is water soluble. And I know that already, but if you're playing, you might not know that and you might end up with a surprise because it does bleed a little. So I'm just drawing shapes. And um, what else do I have? I have some um, graphite. Um, which is always good. And it's gonna make a different kind of a mark and it's going to be stable. So that's the other thing about it. These things I don't use either. And they're, I do use that graphite quite a bit. Um, these are Lyra crayons and they're nice. I just haven't really been using them. So I'm just gonna scribble around with those. And so just um, not worrying at all about the outcomes here. So I'm gonna try some, let's see, some watercolor here. Again, something that I just never use. And I would never probably use it in the traditional manner anyway, but could I mix it with some of my other media? So I'm just gonna put it straight on here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so you can see my media underneath is, um, the black woody stabilo and it's not watertight. So you can see that it really shifted the color of the um, watercolor. So we can see just by applying water, how much that actually moves. So you might wanna check things. Um, another good thing is making a chart. Yeah, see how much that moves. So it can be to your advantage, um, but it can be to your disadvantage as well. <laughs> So knowing, so this crayon is totally stable. That doesn't go anywhere. And um, let's see, what else did I have in here? I didn't have any charcoal. We'll put some charcoal down. Yeah, so the woody stabilo goes way dark and really shifts. So let's see what else I can. Oh yeah, I'd like to try some of these. These are 
Faber Castell gelatos, and um, they're kind of like lipstick. I'm going to test them to see if they're um, going to run. There's still some. A little bit, but not too much. Yeah, so they stay stable. They have a bit of a grainy effect. So I'm going to try also some chalk. Oh my, this chalk is really broken up. Okay, well. So I actually do use chalk in my work, um, mostly for making outlines and corrections but sometimes some of it stays in the work and um, just gets sealed under some of the mediums. So I like how chalk goes on my work and um, how it does something different. Got that chalky line, oh, I know, charcoal. So charcoal, Charcoal, you might not be aware of how it smears so much, but um, I'm going to show you. So it's a bit granular, but it's definitely not uh, water stable, but you can still create a nice line and nice grays around it. Okay, so let's bring in some white gesso here. My gesso is plugged up. So other things I like to do, uh, you know, I consider gesso to be your eraser, um, can obliterate and let go of things. This gesso is um, Liquitex and it's not as trans, um, opaque as some brands. It's more transparent. Of course, I'm putting it on kind of thin. So again, the scraper, is a fantastic tool. I really like using the scraper. The other thing you can do is scratch back into your work. And you'll see this in my work a lot that I scratch back into uh, wet paint and make marks and bring some of the previous um, color out. So let's put a bit over this red and I can show you how that would look. So we're going to get that thick paint on there and then expose what was under it. So that can be really a lot of fun to bring the underpainting back to the forefront again and connect it rather than just having like maybe you want to obliterate something, but you don't want it all to go away um, because it looks too flat. So this is the thing of building up layers and um, yeah, doing a lot of letting go as you go. Okay, so I got a lot of stuff on here. I'm just going to change my paper. Okay, so I'm going to, now I kind of demonstrated a bunch of ideas you can uh, try and, and use and whatnot. And I have a, a lot of other things too, but Right now, I'm just going to kind of um, get into my own space and play a little and, and have you watch me. And then I'm going to let you guys um, get to doing some of your own playing. So I'm just going to um, say turn on the music, but I'm not going to actually do that. <laughs> I'm just going to do something and um, see where it goes playfully. That was acrylic um, paint in there.
buy some of these watercolor um, crayons here. Mm, I like how that went. So it smudged a little bit into some of the um, gesso there. Okay. What else do I have? I have some marabou crayons. Try these. So these I use them mostly with oil paint, but they're kind of like a waxy crayon. See what that does. So what will happen if I put some water on it? Yeah, it does move. Okay, what would happen if I put some gesso on it? It's gonna make a new color, right? Not too much though. Okay, I'm getting a new color down here. So what would happen if I put on some um, medium and sealed it? Maybe. Uh, my nozzle's plug. That's the problem with all this stuff. It's like glue. Okay, let's just try it this way. Put a little over here. So I can seal that down and that is still running. So it's not, it's not very stable at all to use like this. So the other thing I wonder if I put a little medium, sometimes you can put the medium into a spray bottle and just kind of missed it, but I'm just gonna put it on this cloth and I'm gonna dab it. So it's lifting it a little bit. But when that dries, that should seal it down more. So you could also use a spray fixative. It's just not something I use in my studio. So, but you could use a spray. A spray. Okay, let's see. I'm not trying to make a painting, but this could be a start of something, except it's not on a it's not on a good piece of paper. So, but I'm just using a razor blade here, trying to incise some marks back into that. So there's all kinds of things you can use for mark making, and they don't have to be from the art supply store. So that's another whole thing to consider. And this is a China marker, but I don't know if I can get it to work. No. There's just a little bit left here. So and I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is totally stable. You see, that's not running at all. Okay, so this is getting to be quite the, quite the mess. It's getting lots of stuff on it, but why not put a little bit more? Uh, let's see, what else did I bring out here? Some, some ink. So like I said, I very seldom um, use acrylic ink anymore, so I have a lot of it. So 
I find it, it does lift and um, the acrylic high flow is just my preference now. Oh yeah, look at that, that was fun. I had some resist going on there. So the ink is very transparent, but it is absorbing into the paper. Okay, so I almost feel guilty about using this paper, but it's better than wasting it. So many of you probably know. Anyway, ladies, I think um, I've given you quite a bit of, of ideas of things you might try, and this would just keep going on. Um, maybe I'll just show you uh, one more thing that I might do um, with this. And again, maybe I'll just use white gesso. I'll show you a couple of things, maybe this being one. So just putting some paint down And then also going back in and lifting it back up. So you can just kind of get it a little softer. Then you can use this lifted up portion as a bit of a textural stamp. So you can do stuff like that. Um, other things you could do with that is, I'm gonna use this really uh, circus green, this color, I, I got this from somebody in a bunch of supplies I bought and it's really, I don't like premixed greens normally anyway, but this one is beyond belief. It's so bad. I call it circus green. Okay, so I put some on here. And what I want to do with this green is tweak it so I could use it. So it might need a lot of yellow. Okay, so I'm going to put that there and I'll just try my brayer. Yeah, so I'm taking, I'm making a transfer basically with this. So you can transfer some shapes off. Um, and this is deli paper I'm using, but you can use cheap co copy paper, like your computer paper. That's That works well. Okay, so the other thing I could do, um, this would be better with a little more fluid paint. Oh, this is going to be quite the colorful concoction. Okay, so I just grabbed this fluid paint. Again, the nib is closed. not so fluid. Okay, so I've just got some on there. And what I'm going to do is put this on. And I'm going to make a shape. So just whatever comes out of this. Maybe I'll Make another shape this way. So that becomes a bit of a ghost. So it's just uh, peeking through there. So this is just another way of getting paint down. So you don't always have to put everything on with a brush. Um, yeah. So these make great starts for collage paper. After this dries, I can use it to pick up some more, but I could also just paint into it and make it a collage paper. I hope you enjoyed that free workshop and that it gave you some ideas on how to loosen up and make marks and try different things. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can also come over and join me in my community group on Facebook. Pat Scrivener Creative Community, where other like-minded artists meet and share e their work and support each other.